in a moment. Class. Introducing first, this young man hails out of Belfast Island, wearing the white trunks and the green top. Please welcome Cornell In the blue corner, wearing the familiar colors of blue and white of Team USA, this young man hails out of Oaktown, Oakland, California. Please welcome Andre Ward. Colonel Carmichael and Andre Ward set to go, 178 pounders for two minute rounds. Dave Bontempo, Scott Ledoux, and we're joined by Manny Stewart, the director of boxing coaching for the U.S. Olympic movement. And Emmanuel, you've had the good power we've seen, the nice intensity with these boxers. You've also been famous with guys like Tommy Hearns and their jab and the, uh, the technical movement. Is that something you think you'll also be putting into these guys as you go along after you yeah. get past this phase? Yeah, they're not going to win the gold medal just simply by being punchers because a lot of guys punch better than the IQs. And a lot of them are much physically stronger, but when they incorporate boxing with the punching power, in fact, Andre Wynn up here, uh, Andre Ward, who's boxing up here, is one of our top fighters. He's been extremely successful recently in winning a string of not only national but international championships. He won the 2003 Titan Games, recently completed. Also won the Everlast Fran Jones Under-19 Championship. Yes, and he's a perfect example of a boxer and a puncher. And I just saw him a minute ago switch over left-handed, nail the guy with a straight left down the chute. Oh, yeah. But it, and he's, all of the guys that are from Ireland here are basically physically tough kids, and all of them keep their hands up pretty high. But they're just going against probably our best team. Here's Andre Ward now going southpaw, leaning in. And conversely, the Irish team, it might be their second group as a new element has been added in Ireland for a high performance group. As it, we talked in the open about the government allocating more money to their program. And those boxers now are off in a special camp. But I tell you what, if they keep fighting these qualified fights over here, they're going to improve tremendously. Even though they may lose some of these matches, they're going to be much better fighters when they get back to Europe. Losses don't mean you're a bad fight, it means you're getting experience. That's right, and it depends on the quality of competition. You can stay undefeated if you fight second-rate fighters throughout your whole career. So we come to the end of the opening round. It's been entertaining. United States and Ireland from the Convocation Center on the campus of Cleveland State University. Well, Andre Ward off to a good start. 4 nothing against the guy who was coming at him. Guys coming at him, but the thing that I like about the fighters I've seen tonight, they have great eyes, they're very focused, and I like to see them do the little face there, do little yeah. subtle things. Yes, they're changing up a lot. They're much more diversified and not just one dimension. And a perfect example is this fight right here. Andre Ward, in the course of one round, has punched effective to the body. He switched from the southpaw position. He's jabbed. He's counterpunched very well. He's doing everything. Showing him everything. Second round action. Colonel Carmichael in the green. He's from Ireland versus Andre Ward from the U.S. Ward off to a 4 nothing start. Dave Bontempo and Scott Ledoux here with you from Cleveland. We're joined by Emmanuel Stewart, director of coaching for the U.S. Olympic movement. As we see Ward doing a lot of work to the head. Emmanuel, are you surprised through the years at the low amount of body punching from U.S. teams as they try to fight for the computer? That's correct, because right now, the way the computer system is designed, it nullifies all body punching as well as combinations. A guy can land 10 combination punches and get one score because you can't even get a score for one because you know they have to have time to push the buttons now we saw one phase where boxers were starting to box for the computer but now you're bringing in something else with uh, what you, the boxers have learned at your camp well i tell you what if, if you're knocking guys out uh, giving them standing counts whether they want to give you credit for the body punches or not it's going to reflect when the guys start hitting the floor start hitting the floor plus they're going to that's start, right they're going to they're going to get cheap with their punches because they don't want to get hit well, I'm very impressed with the punching power and the diversification of the guys tonight. They're all looking very good and looking fairly physically strong, too. And they look on the muscle as here is Ward going southpaw, then going back to the conventional style. He is leading 
9-4, and this is a wide open freewheeling second round because he won the opener 4 nothing. And so in this round, Carmichael has come out and slugged with him. Well, Carmichael's has to watch a couple of these guys before him, and he's probably thinking there's not much I can do out here, but he's starting to get the feel for it. But I'll tell you what, Andre Ward's got a lot of different tools in that bag. That's it. If he was just doing one thing, Carmichael would pretty much figure that, but he's changing up his attack, doing so many different things. So many different looks, he doesn't know which yeah. one to look for. And the power of every punch. Andre Ward with the lead right hand, then he goes back. Coming up with different angles and always trying to punch. He's showing a lot of intensity. And Colonel Carmichael couldn't match it. Dropping your right hand. Keep your right hand up. Well, you Andre, a lot of heroes in this game. The score at the end of round Maybe four. the biggest one in there right now Real could good. be Roy Jones Just Jr. Loves to but watch him fight. Up. Look at me. A guy with that kind of talent, man, he's got God-given talent, and you can't put no limits on that. You know, that guy, he's incredible, and he works extremely hard. And... I mean, I'm, I'm light for this division, and I'm fighting a guy who's taller and who's bigger than me, so I plan on doing basically the same thing. Speed kills. You can't train for speed. Well, he looks up to the step up. right people in the game. He's been off to a nice start in this bout. Good he's example of what he's doing. Hand. Straight left hand. Fired in there. With the chin down. Speed kills, but power helps. Yeah, yes, he's punching with speed and power. And, 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 and doing so many different things that he can't forget what he's going to do. Whatever he does, he's doing it fast and hard. Into round three we go. Andre Ward and Colonel Carmichael set for four two minute rounds. You're watching the USA Ireland dual meet here in Cleveland. Dave Bontempo, Scott Ledoux, and Emmanuel Stewart, the director of coaching for U.S. boxing, and also a great trainer. Man to the years has had people like Tommy Hearn, Silver Kenty, and that fabled Kronk Stable. Still talked about uh, 20 years after it got hot. Uh, Emmanuel, as you look through here, these guys have a year to go before the Olympics. How do you keep a focus, get a guy's mind going for the next year? Well, I think all of the guys now are getting excited because you can start feeling the Olympic fever. And for the first time in about maybe 10 or 12 years, it's really getting to be a team feeling now. The guys are training together in camps, uh, spending a lot more time. And everybody right now is looking forward to waiting to the Olympics rather than turn professional. They're looking at these big multi-million dollar contracts. Yeah, a year ago, these guys would be having to make a decision about which way to go, but with only one year left. With only one year left. And, and we have a, still a very young team, too. Compared to like the 88 team where a lot of the guys that was on the Olympic team were military guys, you know, and the Mercer and the McKinney, those guys, and they were older guys. These kids here, a lot of them are just 18, 17, 19. So, hey, they're young enough and they said, hey, why turn pro right now? The difference I see is that a guy like Andre Ward, he's firing punches, but he's staying right there. He's not firing punches and leaving. No, and, and he's really not a really full light heavyweight. He's, he was really thinking about fighting at 65 and just decided I'll go ahead and fight 78 so he's given up a lot of natural weight so as we come down on the final segments of round three is Andre Ward building up a nice size lead here against Colonel Carmichael he's been a righty he's been a southpaw he's gone to the head the body it's all working for him Reward fights. He's got me confused. He's going <laughs> left-handed. He's going right-handed. How would you like to be the guy facing him? You don't know what to do with him. And look at that Carmichael's face. He feels just like you feel. Oh, he's got to be destroyed. Oh, he can't get out of the ring. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kelly, he's left-handed. He's right-handed. You think I got him now? Then he hits you with a straight left hand. Well, I tell you what. What I'm seeing, I, I would pay to see Andre Ward fight because he's doing a lot of things and being a boxer, he would be very refreshing as a professional fighter. He's got a great look in his eye. I, I always say, I, talk, I love the eyes. I like watching guys' eyes. When I see a guy with a look like he's got, he's really got a great look. We start the final round between Andre Ward and Conal Carmichael. Andre Ward, a brilliant start, 17 to 6. It's our fifth bout of the evening. The U.S. has won three of the four. And we've seen some tremendous punching power over Quan Kimbrough with a one-punch stoppage 
over Edward Highland. Bring back some shades of David Reed when he did that. Yeah, overhand right. And that was the last U.S. gold medal in 1996. Michael Carruth has Ireland's lone gold medal. That was in the 1992 Olympic Games. And then there was a medal for Wayne McCullough in 1996. But the Irish team, thinking that they're going to make much more noise, maybe in 2008 with the new developmental program that they have underway. And so this is the first stage of it. Well, I'm impressed. Even though the kids are losing, they're fighting good fights, and I think the kind of competition is going to help them a lot. Now, they've been right in front of all the U.S. fighters. That's correct. They have not learned much. The defense has been their biggest asset. Good body shots here by Ward. That doesn't always be answered. The thing that I was impressed with was when Kimbrough knocked that guy down is that the conditioning had to be there because he was able to get back up. He got right back up. And I got to say, because he got hit with a bomb and still got up. And then you look at the fact you have a Kimbrough better because he had that type of a power and going into the third round, they have one punch punching power. So it's, exactly. It's, you know, you don't expect this in amateur boxing. Compared to a few years ago, when everyone was shoe shining and whatever, right. we went to an entire new level now. These guys are letting them go now and they're getting respect. And when you start banging people, yeah. they don't want to do the no. pity pat with you. And that's what the Cubans respect a lot, too. As long as they have the amateur kids from America slapping and shoe shining, they, but when you punch hard, everyone respects that. And they start thinking about maybe they don't want to play yeah. that right. Because I always say it takes heart to knock somebody out. But these kids are punching tonight. These are professional punching right there. They've done well. They've sat yeah. down on their punches. We haven't seen the jab as much. No. That's no knockdown. The crowd has loved these guys sitting down and firing the power shots. And these are some big ones here by Ward. As we come to the end of about that, Ward dominated, but... It's been a tough fight. He was fight, in a though. fight. Yeah. Well, Emmanuel, we know you have a lot of things to do. Thanks for stopping by with us. Great to see you. Best of luck, and we'll chart your progress. Okay, I'm going to go and watch some more fights. <laughs> Andre Ward had it going his way in this bout tonight. I'll tell you, he threw some body shots tonight. My ribs are sore right now. He punches land. So you're going to take three weeks off after watching this? Yeah, i got to take a couple weeks off. You know, my body's sore from these shots. Interesting thing, you know, they can talk about, and we've gone over it, how you don't see the body shots getting appreciated, but everybody who's down to the body tonight, including Andre Ward here, has won. Every one of them. Let's get the final verdict on this victory here for Andre Ward. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner on points by decision, 25 to 9, in the blue corner from Oakland, California, Andre Ward. Andre Ward winning in very convincing fashion. You love to get that lopsided win in a powerful bout, and he is able to do it here. Local favorite Mickey Bay gets his chance to please the crowd. The 125 pound competition is next. Bay versus Patrick Highland, the older of the Fighting Highland. And one of Cleveland's own, Mickey Bay, goes up against Patrick Highland in the 125 pound division. 